This conference will now be recorded. All right, great. Well, thank you everybody for joining us for the RTD Accountability um, Subcommittee, the Governance Subcommittee. So um, my name is Julie Duran Molica, um, and I was um, appointed this morning. Thank you so much, uh, co-chairs, for appointing me to chair this um, subcommittee. And what I was really hoping for today, um, we didn't have a, a presentation prepared or anything specific for this meeting. We do have um, one scheduled for our next meeting. We're actually going to be able to, to have a presentation from someone from the LA Metro group that we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks. So um, really looking forward to that conversation. But one of the things that I thought would be really helpful, um, at least for this group, now that we're a little, you know, a little bit of a smaller group now, um, let's look at that uh, governance subcommittee kind of outline that was discussed this morning. Um, and let's kind of hash that out a little bit. What I want us to try and figure out is how can we come up with at least, you know, um, a couple of objectives to focus on um, in the next you know, month or so so that we really kind of feel like we're, we're um, making a, some progress towards a specific goal. Now, as I keep reading through this, <laughs> and I'm not sure how you guys feel about this, but this is such a large issue of um, just in general of you know how what are ways that we can improve RTD and governance is just a small fracture of that and there's going to be lots of places where it overlaps um, with some of the other subcommittees so um, any great conversations that we have in here we could definitely take over to the other subcommittees um, but I, I want to just kind of work through um, these points that were discussed this morning and I really want to give um, people the ability to just kind of have an open conversation um, about what are the true issues um, that we as a governance committee could really focus on. What are, what are the problems that we're trying to solve? Um, and then how can we, you know, work towards coming to a recommendation that we could put um, towards the, the council, uh, the committee as a whole. So, um, I'm, I'm going to open the floor and just see if there's anyone who wants to jump at that um, right away. How are we feeling about these four points that have been outlined um, by the co-chairs? Are we missing anything? And um, is there anything, general comments that people have right off the bat? Feel free to jump in. I don't know how to tell if anyone has a hand or anything. So go ahead and just jump in at this point. All right, I see, I see Jackie waving. I know, I don't know, I don't know how else to let you know I have a hand up, but um, I, again, I wanna reiterate my thanks to the co-chairs for putting what I think is a very thorough and thoughtful document together. And I, um, and I uh, just as I said this morning, I, I feel strongly that um, item number four is something that kind of is gonna be happening alongside one, two, and three. So the idea of whether, whether the board could be or would be more effective with a different size or structure is something that I'm kind of weighing as, I, as we learn more about um, alternative governance structures. And then another issue I would just like to have others react to is the, is this idea that we have only looked at governance structures associated with other transit organizations. That's all, we, we've, and what we have determined for sure is that RTD is a unique organization that um, really is not like any of the other transit agencies that we have looked at. So I'm wondering if, if there is, if we should expand our, our thoughts a little bit or not just restrict our governance review to um, to other models. And one that just came to mind is the regents, the CU regents who have this diverse group of constituencies that they are serving different distinct universities with different um, characteristics and different needs, much like the RT, the geography is different and the service that's needed is different. and how they've got some at-large members associated with them that kind of have that higher level view of the entire university system versus just the um, one school that may be in the area that they represent. 
So uh, that's just a thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I think those, those are some really great comments and thank you for those. Um, and I will also be taking notes as well. Anyone? Can I ask a segue question off of that? Sure. Um, I thought it was a good point, um, except for the partisan part, the CU regents are partisan, right. I don't want to go there. But um, Doug, I dimly recall you, got, you um, were working on a matrix of different governance models and sort of pros and cons and elements of them. Is that, did I make that up or is that still in the works? Because I think that might um, lend itself well to Jackie's question. We could continue to sort of add to it as we look at different models. Yeah, Jack, uh, sorry, at least I do. Um, I got, well, the six models, the six cases that we looked at, I have those in a matrix now. Um, and quite frankly, the only cells that I don't have filled is the pros and cons. Um, simply because it's, you know, pros and cons, according to Doug Rex, I don't know, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's kind of in the eye of the beholder, but um, I'd be happy to share that with that caveat for our next meeting. Um, I can get it out beforehand, too, if you'd like to have it. Thanks. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Um, oh, another question, Ron, go ahead. Sorry, Julie, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was just going to throw out for the subcommittee's consideration, maybe maybe honing on, honing in on sort of the different options, the specific options around sort of board governance would be useful because really there are some discrete choices, right? Appointed board versus elected board, districts, kind of, and how districts might be identified. Are they identified differently? Are they all at large? Uh, you know, how does how does that work? Um, the size of the board, the number of the number of board members. I think there are some discrete sort of options to maybe investigate if if this if this subcommittee wants to get into really the nuts and bolts and formulate a recommendation around sort of board RTD board governance sort of issues. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think one of the things that I I am still struggling with um, trying to wrap my head around when I'm thinking about how do we want to or, or if we were to recommend changes to this board, what would it look like? And most importantly, what problem would it solve? If we recommend that all of the positions are appointed, what problem are we trying to solve with that? Um, if we're trying to recommend that, you know, the districts are different, what problem are we trying to solve with that? Because I think for me right now, just my perspective as a local and some I've heard as other local officials is we feel like, one, we're, we're kind of looped out of the, the cycle. We're, we don't really have a lot of um, input, if you will, when it comes to how RTD impacts our local communities. Um, and then, you know, how could we be part of that process? I think that that's what I've heard from other folks. And elected or not elected, please feel free to jump in, but what, what are the true issues that we as I guess stakeholders in this process um, still are lacking currently that, and maybe that could help guide our direction in, in what recommendations we want to see different with the board. I think that that's a really good point. I think we need to do that throughout um, all of the subcommittees. When we're talking about recommendations, keep going back to what we're trying to solve. Um, and, I, and I'm somewhat, biased in this document since I had it uh, um, a hand in drafting it that um, I put up, you know, sort of as number one, um, I focus less on sort of board, the board piece and more about um, the relationship with local governments, RTD and local governments, the regional sub-regional to talk mm -hmm. that that goes to the heart of trying to solve right now the, the the lack of trust and the lack of cooperation or that the I should rephrase it the opportunity for greater cooperation and greater trust um, and collaboration between RTD and the communities it serves and a recognition that there's a difference between transit local transit services which local communities really have a good sense of and are really a part of um, uh, creating drafting um, putting together and regional service that might be more uniquely RTDs to provide, although local gov governments and communities certainly have a, a, have some thoughts on what that looks like. So 
Um, that I think drives directly at some of the issues that folks have now with um, the provision of service and 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 what's the best way to figure out uh, the balance between geographic coverage versus high density is working collaboratively with local communities about um, integrating local and regional service. So that's why I thought that that was a pretty ripe area um, to help focus the conversation. And as Jackie mm -hmm. said, we can have in the back of our mind what kind of board structure might best support that. But um, I, th I, I would I would start with figuring out the regional sub regional model if that's the way uh, the route we want to go first, and then figure out what how the board could support that. Okay. And if I could Joyce, just add lots of people who unmuted themselves. So let's just take them one at a time. Go ahead, Jackie. I see you jump in there. You know what? I feel like I spoke already. So day, I go ahead, and then I'll I'll go. Okay. Yeah, I I just want to share. I I think I I see where Elise is going, but I I just want to reiterate a comment that I made earlier this morning at the RTD account, the full accountability committee. Um, regardless of where we start, we really need to identify what the root cause issue is, especially within local government. Because again, I see a lot of folks on this call that are representatives of local communities. So what is the true challenge to them partnering and engaging with RTD? And it's almost like that's really what we're trying to solve for. And then identifying what the structure, what best structure could support that. I think those are great comments, Yeah. yeah. Exactly something I'm trying to get at as well. Go ahead, Jackie. No, I, I, I echo all of that. And the other piece I would like to add is that I do feel like the, there is a, a parochialism uh, that is given the way I'll the board is. I'll call you back in a minute. I'm on the RTD call right now. So, sorry, I'm not sure what that was. But uh, so, but that parochialism, like how much am I bringing back to my community versus a high level regional look about what is in the best interests of the region right now. And it's the same issue that we we went we struggle with at Dr. Cog. And so ensuring that there is this high level regional backbone of transit that is prioritized by all of the board, even though they're elected by these individual um population groups and so that's the problem i'm i also feel like needs to be addressed okay lynn i see yeah. you on i was uh I, yeah i have a few thoughts this is a really good conversation and, and um i think uh you know I, I guess i was feeling a little frustration that this committee was was um focused kind of solely on the board for a while because i do i agree with um, with what you're saying about you got to figure out the problem you're solving, and I agree with Elise, um, you know, in terms of sort of setting up this document that really figuring out the problems, figuring out, um, you know, is there a, a way to work better with our local communities um, may lead to kind of where we are with the board. Um, I think that uh, you know, looking at some of the local service organizations or, or sub regions, things like that could be good. I also think that um, I'll go back to uh, a comment that um, Jackie made this morning. You know, we've the board has brought on a new um, CEO and, um, you know, we can have, uh, I, and, and this is no knock on this committee. I hope this committee has some great suggestions. It's no knock on the board, but I think the best thing we do is get a really good CEO um, to, you know, lead us in the near future. And I'm hopeful for that. And I think that um, you know, working with her some is also a good thing. Um, so I, you know, I agree. I, I'd say if you can move forward and look at the problems, and then uh, and then see, you know, I, I recognize the inherent problem of having people vote elected from specific districts. It's a hat we all. It's two hats we all wear and do. Um, do we recognize that? And, and uh, I think, as, as you said, Jackie, it's true for local governments and groups like the uh, Metro mayors as well. Um, so I think it's a good conversation. Thanks. 
Awesome. Thank you, Lynn, for those comments. Um, and so one of the things that I think would be helpful is, you know, what trying again to like hammer out the, the deeper issues here of what it is that we need. I think that could really help us figure out um, what we necessarily, what, what changes we need to make, not necessarily to the board itself. I mean, maybe that will come through this process, but what is it that we as stakeholders need um, from the board itself? Um, and I, I do appreciate this document. I feel like this is really helpful, um, especially the conversation around community-based transit planning, because I think that that has been something that I know has been brought up in, in our communities surrounding me, um, is if we can't get service, or if we're not getting service that meets our needs, then how do we kind of make it up on our own? Um, and so I'm, I'm excited that we're going to be hearing from LA Metro next week. Are there any other um, presentations from organizations that anyone on this call has heard of or anything like that that we'd like to ask staff to bring to us for consideration um, and add it to the matrix that Doug currently is already working on? You know, I did have one other thought that um, and I, I meant to follow up with the staff and, and find out more about it, but RTD has participated, I think it's called the MAX program, M-A-X-X, with other um, uh, similar agencies or other agencies. I'm, I'm not even sure. I think DART was part of it. Um, and so there may be uh, some existing information and uh, I can follow up and see um, what came out of that process. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that could be really helpful. Another question that I had is, um, do we have any information from the reimagine process, like, um, you know, feedback from those folks on, um, I guess, perhaps maybe some things that they feel like they needed more from RTD? Um, most likely it's going to be communication, right, um, is what we're talking about, but other ways of being, um, more part of the process. Do we have any information from Reimagine that we could use for this group as we continue to kind of collect some of that feedback from people? I think probably so. I'm, I wasn't exactly sure, Julie, what um, you, what information you were looking for. So I, I think what I'm looking for is Previously on the, one of our calls, somebody wanted to, or somebody brought up the idea of, should we even like survey stakeholders, if you will, to try to get a better sense of what are some of the issues that people are, um, you know, just their personal experience of, of working with RTD. Um, my thoughts would be um, not only elected, but staff. I think our staff are, are great <laughs> at trying to really pinpoint down, um, you know, what are some, some issues and frustrations that they're experiencing when it comes with RTD? Do we have anything from Reimagine that could help us with that? Or does this group think that something like that would be helpful if we did a survey of any type? Um, just kind of as a, um, I don't know, a, a data gathering process to help us formulate which would be a better, you know, governance structure or maybe even tweaks to our current system that could really improve that that process of communication and just kind of being involved um, in the decision making of our TV. Do we have anything available now? Julie, uh, I think that I see maybe Bill Soroy or Bill Van Meter on the call. I, I don't know if uh, if they might be able to answer that. Or if that's not them, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, then that's something that maybe we could ask um, them, uh, Doug, if you want to just ping them and see if there's any information from Reimagine that we might have. Um, because what I'm trying to, what what my personal experience has been is I feel like we're just out of the loop when it comes to RTD. I feel like um, it, it gets confusing for our constituents sometimes because um, they come to city council and they're like, why isn't this working? You know, why don't I have reliable transit? Why aren't we, why am I not able to get to, you know, my job? Um, and, and it's great to hear those comments, but unfortunately, I'm not part of that process. Um, and so, you know, I defer them on to, you know, the RTD 
um, director of my area. And so I, how can we, you know, identify that as a potential issue? Um, and how can we improve communication um, with our RTD board director? So I don't know about how everyone interacts with theirs, but I'm pretty close with my director. I've been to USIC. Um, he's been to our council um, at least twice, I think, since he's been elected. Um, but other than that, I feel like any type of um, transportation-related kind of communication or updates tends to just go to the Metro Mayor's caucus. And so if you're not a mayor, then you're not really kind of part of that. And of course, you know, it, it, that message doesn't really get involved or it doesn't come down um, probably to the rest of council. And so essentially, if I wasn't kind of part of this conversation, I, I may have only talked to Vince, you know, twice um, via council um, this whole time. So how do we, you know, get locals and others interested um, involved in those conversations more, I think is, is one issue that I think is um, important, at least for my community. So just um, going, Julie, could I just add on yeah. to that? I think certainly yeah. communication can be improved. I want to go deeper and more structural. Yeah. My, my vantage point as a, a local elected is we want to be a part of the decision making, in particular, right now and when routes are planned in particular when routes are cut um rtd makes the decision and then comes and asks well what do you think about that i think a better system would be or we think a better system would be partnering with local communities ahead of time saying what are the most important routes in your community if we only have a finite amount of resources, help us figure out what's, what works best for your community locally and then what fits in best with regional routes and let us be a, a, a part of the conversation before cuts are made and when, and when transit routes are being designed. Um, again, sort of a, a, a local and regional um, division of labor um, between communities that, that RTD serves and um, RTDs sort of more regional system. And to add on to that, I think some of the local service, the uh, call ride service, those types of things that there's only, RTD has one way of providing that service. That's the only way they provide it. You've got to meet these certain metrics and local communities could actually uh, deliver the service more effectively um, and at a lower cost if they just were given, um, you know, the, if there was more flexibility from from RTD and RTD could just give local communities the call and ride dollars. And as long as we met metrics identified by RTD, uh, you, you know, I, I think it would create a win-win and we would tailor the programs to the communities, which I think would be huge. And I, I do want to suggest though that, that uh, I, I did participate in the reimagine process and and I think there's really some really great data that the operations committee might be interested in um, knowing more about. So I would I would actually suggest that maybe some RTD RTD staff, uh, Bill Stroy, who was kind of leading that effort, might um, make a presentation on kind of the um, some of the operational. Uh, data that was received and and you know kind of point in time conclusions that they did have from rtd i think i think and Dea, you might be interested in if i was you i'd be interested in, in seeing it and knowing that so i just thought i'd add that as well i didn't uh julie i didn't feel from my participation and and elise also participated and there's probably other people on the call as well a doug yeah. rex i know did I don't necessarily feel like there's anything directly related to the work of the governance subcommittee that was really discussed in the um, in the reimagine process. That's my perspective. Curious what others' thoughts are. Yeah, I I do not remember uh, reimagine going into more of the governance pieces. We really folk we being the folks that participated in reimagine were primarily focused on the operations system optimization. Um, service delivery rather than the actual governance structure of RTD. And so I don't know if there's anything in there that might be useful. What I would actually, and this might also still be within the other, um, one of the other groups, I would almost go back to some of the past program working group. Um, back in 2017, 2018, they had some really interesting data that they pulled from other cities 
that might be useful for this conversation, although at this point it might be outdated as well. But again, mm -hmm. it didn't really focus on governance. I think um, your operations subcommittee, Dea, um, yeah. has that as its one of its top priorities is working, mm -hmm. looking at the past work on passes yeah. and fares. So um, I think that's a great idea, but I think you should lead that in, oh, yeah. in your subcommittee. Yeah, for this group, I was looking at it mainly around the, the service area and structure, like if there was anything that we could pull from a peer city, because I think they also looked at some international cities, if we wanted to bring that into this conversation, not as much on the fares, but just the service area, um, which I think is under number four for us. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a, a quick just comment or thought as, as I was hearing Jackie and Elise um, and, and Julie, as you were, you were talking about um, partnerships and the role of RTD and partnerships. And I, I'm just kind of curious, I don't really know how many intergovernmental agreements RTD operates under and, and kind of what that structure looks like, but um, it would just be interesting to see that information in terms of governance and what are those existing partnerships that are really well defined with other municipalities. I think one thing that was coming up for me, and this might actually intersect with the finance group, is almost if we could have like a dashboard of some sort to show or to create that level of transparency that this is where RTD is partnering or has an intergovernmental agreement with Boulder to provide service or something like that. I, I don't know if that's if that would be useful in terms of if our work here in the governance, but that might be something for the finance group. Well, and maybe I, I would add to that perhaps that again, where are there successful partnerships happening that we wish Dr. I keep saying Dr. Cog, RTD would want we would want RTD to participate in. And I think the document uh, highlights a couple that I know of up here. Um, uh, in terms of working um, with the Fort Collins uh, transport service on the flex service that comes down through Longmont and into Boulder. Um, RTD has been less of a partner um, in that than we would have liked them to be, but it's a good model. Um, or to look at where communities have bought up service to um, taken uh, RTD dollars and, and provided um, for local service through other uh, transit providers like the hop route in Boulder that uses VIA as the actual operator. So there, and I'm sure there's other models that may or may not include RTD that we would like to emulate and expand within RTD. And maybe we can keep track of, of those and ideas around those. So Elise, can I ask you a follow-up question? Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, your comments and how you wish RTD could have been a better partner. And then one of the things I'm curious about is why, what was, what were the barriers that RTD had to overcome to partner in this particular situation? Well, um, so one of the obvious places is in um, service planning, making adjustments to service. Um, often it comes up in the term, in, in um, the case of when they're making service cuts. The, the, the way I think it should happen is RTD would come to communities and say, hey, we're short on funds. We're gonna have to tighten our belts. What are your ideas on where we can provide more efficient, cost-effective service in your community? Let us know what you think. Instead, RG does that thinking and says, this is what we want to do in your community. And it's it feels like the decision's already been made. And so we don't get to be co-creators of that when we know our community is perhaps even better than RTD does. So that's one real tangible way. Um, RTD, um, I, I don't, it is not very, and I don't, this sounds very negative. I'm, I'm going to try to state it in a more positive. RTD could be a better, um, yeah. more flexible partner in um, looking at the the region as a whole and figuring out how can we be one of the people or the entities that provides transit and creates this a transit system that's effective regardless of whether or not it's inside our service area or connects to it. So how can RTD be a partner with CDOT on on Bustang and mobility hubs? How can re again not to beat a drum but on the flex route that comes out of Fort Collins that's outside of RTD's service area but it comes into RTD's service area. How can there be synergies there. That is not how RTD approaches that. 
um, RTD sort of, uh, I think, has a um, sort of a lens where you sort of uh, blinders on about RTD as opposed to how can it be a partner in a larger Colorado transit system that's integrated? In terms of what are the barriers, I think, you know, I might ask Lynn about that. I think some of it's cultural and certainly the financial situation that, that RTD um, is in now feels very limiting. Um, and Lynn, if, uh, again, I'll, I'll let you add what are the other barriers. Um, but I do think if we fix this problem, and if RTD was viewed as a partner, then it would be easier to go to constituents and say, hey, are you willing to invest more funding in the RTD system? Because right now there's no way in hell that would pass up in my neck of the woods, but it could if, if we um, can help RTD transform into a trusted partner with communities. And that's probably the fastest way to, to build trust is to partner with the communities it serves. Yeah, I and agree. And um, uh, I guess I have two thoughts. One is, oh, sorry, I'll, um, uh, one thing I, that I, I think um, Troy and I need to do is go back with some of these questions. I think this list of, of issues is great. And really talk to people about what the what barriers there are or maybe, you know, there's so many regulations, FTA, FRA, just, um, so, there, there, I think the committee needs to start with just a basic understanding of what barriers there are, and then, you know, what can we change? And I think um, that both in Reimagine, uh, that you know, Bill Soroy and, and uh, Bill Van Meter and the team were all hearing loud and clear that people saying, um, you know, we want better partnerships, and and uh, really, I saw a difference. I think in the proposal for January and sort of um, for the service changes in ideas of ways to um, to start to, to use other, for instance, um, uh, won't, they will not be continuing, I forget the term is, uh, but they're not continuing the GS between Golden and Boulder uh, for now during the pandemic um, and uh, are looking at other ways to provide those services. And uh, um, so I think that, that there is a change, you know, in terms of some of the, the uh, approach. And, and, you know, people have been working on it for a while, but um, I think this is timely. It's happening, you know, starting to happen within the agency. And, and uh, what I will do is, is we'll talk with uh, Bill and some of them about what, if there are some specific barriers in terms of transport or bus tang or any of the others that we should know and then from there it becomes a matter of how to make it work right mm -hmm. no i agree jackie i see you unmuted yourself did you want to jump in here no I, I no the only the only thing i i would share is that it's just to me it has come across as bureaucracy and part of that bureaucracy, honestly, is created by uh, the FTA. So, and that isn't, those are rules that, that RTD just has to live by. Um, but I do think collaboration with the local governments and not just relying on the director of the region, of the area to be the voice of that area. Um, uh, it has not been effective in my community. And, and again, I mentioned this morning, you know, we've got the Southwest line that ha is also not completed, that also people have been paying in fast tracks dollars for a very, very long time. And we don't even hear about that line um, at all because there isn't, it's part of a unincorporated Douglas County. It's not part of a city that has a mayor that's at Metro Mayor's Caucus talking about it. Um, and, and, that that's just very disappointing to me that 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 and that's that's representation. I understand that. Um, you know, if Lynn, you know, if Lynn was down there, maybe we would hear about it more, but we don't. So uh, and I and, and Julie, as we talk about governance and to the whole committee, you know, I think having this higher level regional view of what the voters said they wanted and what we said we were going to provide. Um, uh, as much as 
uh, that's that's what I'm just struggling with is how how it's communication with our constituencies. Um, I think those of us in local government know people show up and complain when when the line to the hospital when the bus route to the hospital on Lone Tree was getting cut. The Highlands Ranch people were calling me the mayor of Lone Tree, even though I had nothing and I couldn't do it, you know, to advocate on their behalf. Um, because they didn't feel like they had anybody advocating. Uh, uh, I think Elise said it best. We we do know our local communities the best, but but also, I feel like bu Bustang is stopping at the end of line light rail station in Lone Tree because I said to CDOT, hey, this is a great way to integrate from Colorado Springs into the system instead of having the bus stop all these different places. Why aren't you Why don't you Bustang link in? And I guess I'm just curious, why is it the mayor of Lone Tree that says that and not some big regional collective, you know, like that's looking at mm -hmm. assets and and um, how we move people throughout this region? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I completely agree with you, Jackie. I feel like that's a, a really good example. And thank you for sharing that. Um, I think one of the things I keep thinking about is, and I'm sure everyone would <laughs> agree with me, is you know, a lot of issues with RTD could be fixed with extra funding, right? We've talked about the need for transportation funding in our communities forever, and we're still struggling to get that. Now, with that, how can we partner? What well, this is the approach I'm trying to take here. How can we partner with RTD? How can we gain back that trust? How can we gain back? Um, you know, their partnership um, and really help them, if you will, um, change the message and the narrative about RTD. Because the truth is, is everybody on this call and everybody at RTD and all of our elected officials, what we want is reliable, trustworthy transportation for our community. And that looks different everywhere you go, but how can we work together to try and get there? And so more voices advocating for a community, I think would be a good thing. Um, and so Doug, as I'm kind of thinking about, you know, some points that folks had made during this call, um, what I'd really like to see um, in the matrix is how are each of these, and it could already potentially be that, just so you know, how are <laughs> each of these models, including local governments, um, in their governance process. So what does that look like, um, if at all? And then also, um, is there any you know, regional or local division with funding or routes? You know, that's um, to the second bullet there in, um, on the document that's being shown. Um, and so I think making sure that those are included in our matrix, I think could help us identify you know, which parts of you know, these different governance structures could maybe meet us best um, or help improve, um, at least what we see could be an improvement to the current process. Um, because what I feel like we really need to try and get back is we need to try and figure out how do we win back that trust and how do we, you know, increase those partnerships so that we could be successful as a region. And if you have, if versus us versus the RTD board, how can we switch up that narrative and how can we also be advocates of RTD? And so what would it take us to get there? Um, are some of the issues, or, or, or I think is probably what the main goal of all of our work is. Um, what else would we want to see that's specific for this matrix um, that Doug's kind of putting together? So we want to talk about how are they interacting with locals? How is, um, you know, maybe their funding and, and routes distributed? Um, I doubt I don't know if any of them will have kind of like a sub-regional tip, you know, like our sub-regional tip form process, because um, I felt like that was unique to us. I don't know, Doug, if you stole that from somebody else, but um, it works well for us. So I feel like that could be, that's just a huge strength that I don't know if we'll find anywhere else. So what are some other things that we'd like to see um, on this matrix for different governance structures? And then what I think we need to try and figure out is what could be a good option that works for us um, and so and, and works for this region. So I, I understand that we think that number four um, could really kind of feed into a lot of these conversations. But 
I'd also like to be open-minded to the idea that, you know, maybe with our RGD board directors as it is, how could we partner with them better to create a structure that works? So I, I don't know, that's just probably some of the work that I'm trying to fumble out in my head is how can we, you know, realistically just make a, you know, minor tweaks to, to really impact that communication and partnership. Well, so just uh, not to be a, um, redundant here, but some of the bullets under num number one talk about some of the qualities that um, have been talked about as being desirable. So it, it, in this matrix, I, I don't know if we're going to find the per perfect governance structure elsewhere. I think we we look at what other people are doing, pull the stuff that we like, and make sure that the stuff that we want is in it in what we put together. And and it and some of those bullets are what community-based transit planning, um, having that um, local regional um, integration so that they um, look at the possibility of sharing some of the monies that come into the uh, RTD system, <laughs> some for the regional route, some for the local, and create the opportunity for a local match. As a and, and um, look at, I, I agree with you on the sub-regional tip forum. Uh, that could be a model for how local communities work together to figure out what the local system might look like, say, on a, on a county by county basis. Um, and then the, the last one we haven't talked too much is is performance criteria. And we're fortunate in this region in that we have Dr. Cog, and we have unanimously adopted. Metro Vision, and so and it has met, uh, metrics built into it on how we measure our ability uh, to move towards that regional vision. So we have some built-in performance criteria that we can use in um, making some of these decisions. So those are some of the things that I would include in a in a, a matrix of what we want in a governance system. Okay. Um, we do got a comment from Miller. The subcommittee might benefit from a brief historical tutorial. Why did PRT fail in the 70s? Why did LRT fail in the 80s? Why did voters lose the appointed board in favor of the elected board? What was the transit construction authority and why did it fail? All these failures. How did RTD become the first American transit agency to make its buses wheelchair accessible? Why did guides why did Guide the Rail fail, Fast Track succeed? Okay, so there is a lot of information here um, of kind of like learning the history of failures of the past. Um, and I don't know if there's anyone at RT that could help us with that. Um, and so I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I, I am a little hesitant, um, Miller, because I don't want to, I want to learn from those issues in the past that didn't work. Um, but I also know that if we could figure out and list out our issues that we're seeing today, um, that could help us figure out how to move forward with, with the system that we have currently and how, how to kind of tweak um, you know, this governance and this partnership um, to improve on. So. Um, I was going to comment on your comment, Elise. Um, I do think the bullets under one are helpful. Um, and I think that those are the things that we should be focusing on uh, addressing in the matrix. Doug, you might want to bring um, back some of those Metro Vision goals um, for this group, just as a refresher. Um, I think that could be a good way of, of kind of moving forward as well, um, just so we're on the same page with those. Um, I forgot what else I was going to say. It'll come back to me, I'm sure. So um, moving forward, it sounds like we are pretty comfortable as a group with like the numbers one through four that have been listed out on this document. Um, I haven't heard of anyone really adding anything to these um, as our top priorities for this, um, for this subcommittee. Um, and so with that, I feel like moving steam for, Moving fast forward ahead with number one um, as a priority, as well as trying to figure out how can we tackle number two, which is explore how to enable partnerships with other transit agencies that might require 
um, I, I still don't think I understand fully what some of those barriers are. And so, Lynn, I know that you were going to um, reach out to some others, some soon maybe, um, to, uh, to maybe come back with some better understanding of what some barriers are with RTD when it comes to other partnerships. Um, and so I think we need to find out more information on that. Um, and then, and then number three and four, I think I'm, are kind of wrapped up in each other. Um, and I think that might, we, we might be able to address those a little bit more as we develop and, and work through this matrix um, that Doug's working on. So with that said, are there any other um, priorities that we're missing? Do we have a good understanding of where we're going um, moving forward? Any questions or comments from this group? I guess one question I had that I think all the sub subcommittees are going to try to answer this week is are um, just get, honing in on what additional information we need and whether or not we need any assistance from any of the consultant resources we have available to us, be it North Highlands, the CDOT fellow, um, Dr. Cog as an intern, and Dr. Cog staff also have expertise. Um, are there, Julie, you've done a good job of sort of highlighting where some matrix items might be, we might need to flesh out, but I guess just to really think if there's any missing information that we need to go get, it would, would be helpful to hear, hear that now. Let's see. My biggest thing where the matrix is really going to help us guide a lot of this work. So um, if there are any other agencies that we need to put in the matrix, especially anything international, I don't know if there was certainly anyone, any international in there. So, um, and then number two is um, those partnerships. So I think those are the, the two key elements that we need to kind of further this discussion. Do I have that right or am I kind of missing something, guys? And so I'm not sure who could help us where for either of those items. No. Well, I think Dr. Cog's staff can um, take that information back and kind of figure out what resources can be best aimed at, at fleshing that out. Sorry, I think I just cut off Doug. No, at least you're saying exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think those are the, those are two takeaways for me. I. I think Ron raised some good stuff for the for the matrix earlier too, with regards to you know what types of governance models are even out there, right? They don't have to have a specific list by each individual you know regional transit authority in the country, but just to give you guys some concept associated with. But I, but um, uh, you know the two points that you made earlier, Julie, with regards to how to incorporate local governments in the system, as well as this kind of regional local governance sharing of service that. Uh, or decisions regarding service are ones that we'll, we'll uh, incorporate. I'd also like to understand, Doug, a little bit more about um, other potential partners yeah. um, we talk, that, that could expand service uh, within um, the region. So, so the current partners as well as maybe potential. Right, like, right yeah, uh, like on the fringes, you know, like. For example, Bustang bringing people up from Colorado Springs, and then how do we integrate them into the RTD system and make it? Um, and and I know the same thing is happening on the north side of town as well, and with uh, that is just beyond RTD's borders, but but delivering folks into the RTD service area. Yeah, very good. I also just really quickly wanted to lift up um, a comment that Jackie made around governance structures. And I think it might be useful to look at another quasi-government government government type entity just to get us thinking a little bit more outside the box. I know she had, uh, I think Jackie shared CU, the CU system. So not that we need to dive into that, but I just want, it would be helpful for us to get a clear <laughs> understanding of what does that look like? And is that something we might wanna explore, at least get creative about with RTD? So Doug, um, does that provide you and Ron and Matthew and all your team um, a little bit of a better idea of where we, where, what information that we need um, 
to kind of mull over as a group? It does for me. Yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with uh, with the type of information you want for the next meeting for sure. Okay. And so for the next meeting, um, we do have someone from LA Metro, I think, right, you said? So we'll, we could definitely cover that. And then um, hopefully if there's anything, if there's a, a any more information to the matrix that you want to share with this group um, beforehand, that would be great. Um, just as we could, as we're learning more about these different governance structures um, and different um, structures in general, um, it would be kind of good to give people the ability to just kind of review that information um, before we have LA Metro folks here, um, you know, might for any additional questions or clarifications that this group needs um, to kind of flush out. All right, so any final comments or questions from this group? I don't want to keep us longer than we need to go in beating a dead horse, but I feel like we have a little bit more of a direction of where we're headed. So anyone else want to speak up? Go ahead, Ron. Sorry, Commissioner Jones, I should, I'll defer to you first, sorry. Oh, she's deferring to you. I was just gonna try to recap a couple of key points that I think I picked up a little bit in the conversation, see if I've got it right and then maybe throw out a, a concept for your consideration. Um, so I've, I've heard sort of more, more structural sort of thinking about changing the governance structure with the goal of greater cooperation and trust between RTD and local governments, local communities, um, community-based service planning as a good opportunity, um, kind of really thinking about um, how to have a more inclusive approach to decision making in the sphere of RTD, kind of between the regional kind of service that RTD provides and more community level or local level service. And it, so I think I heard a, a lot, a strong theme there. Um, I'm wondering if it might be helpful to frame your discussions about different governance options around that theme and how different governance structure structures might achieve that better than others. Is, the, is that a good way to kind of frame that conversation? Exactly. I think that that's right on. Everyone else agree? Okay, got a couple of nods. Thank you, yeah, I think that's perfect, Ron. That was a great summary, thank you for doing that. The one thing I was going to mention is we had talked about making sub uh, the subcommittees a place for some more informal dialogue with with subject matter experts outside the committee. And since we had a few um, minutes left, uh, you might consider asking if there were any comments from folks that are that all of the uh, initials that are listening in um, to see if there's Thank any you. Um, comments. I think that's a good clarification because I just hope that everyone knows when I say, does anyone else want to jump in? I really do mean anybody else on this phone call. <laughs> I do want to open these up. We have great people who have um, dialed in and, you know, people who consistently, um, you know, called into these calls just to see what's going on. If you do, if anybody has um, anything they want to share or comment, please feel free to, to jump in. And I think you should be able to unmute yourself and, and do it. If not, Melinda, I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> hey, Julie, this is Rod. Yeah, uh, I, I did want to say that I really got a lot out of this and it was very useful. And I will have a better meeting myself on Thursday as a result of having sat in or Wednesday. A lot of good ideas. Great. Thanks. Well, it's a great group that called in. Thank you guys for the discussion. Uh, Anyone else want to jump in? <laughs> okay, good. Go ahead, jump in. Hey, Julie, thank you. Hey, this is Nick with the City and County of Denver. And uh, it's first meeting here. Uh, I think it's great discussion. Let me tip back a little bit here so you can see me. Um, yeah, and just appreciate the conversation so far and look forward to uh, participating in these meetings in the future. Great, yes, yeah, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. All right, anybody else? Okay. Well, then I am going to let us go four minutes early. Um, thank you all for the great discussion. I'm hoping our next meeting is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to that presentation, and, and we'll work on this matrix. So thank you all for your hard work. Have a good day. See you guys. Thanks, Julie. Thanks. Bye. Bye.